Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Let's get a few seconds in here. Okay, and I'll do the intro. In three, two, one. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. As always, I am still Seth. I will always be Seth from now and for eternity. So I am honored to have Tony Yang on the program today. Tony has done quite a bit in his life, and he's still going, which is awesome. He is the growth advisor currently, currently, he's the growth advisor over at Mucker Capital. He is the co founder and CEO of Rev Optica, which we'll get into. And then he consults as well. Now, in the past, he's done, I'm just going to cheat here because he, he has got a nice little list that he gave me. He's done a lot. He says, in the past 16 years, I'm sure it's longer than 16 now, but he's, you know, he's an ABMer, account based marketing. He's done, he's been the VP of demand generation. He's worked for Natural Language Processing Writing Assistant, which is now Writer. You've done, you've been a CMO. You've done this. You've done that. You've done quite a bit of stuff. And I'm gonna let you talk about a little bit more about that as we get into your journey. But so, how did this all get started? Have you always wanted to be an entrepreneur, or is it sort of like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur all of a sudden? That's an interesting question. Well, first of all, thanks Seth for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. It's great to to be on here. So, you know, I. I want to say uh, that it's in my blood. I come from a family of entrepreneurs, although early on in my career, that wasn't my focus or my intention. Early on in my career, I just wanted to get a job. I focused on marketing since uh, that was something that I sort of fell into with my first marketing job when I was working for IBM. Out there. Why does everyone work for IBM? Like everyone works for IBM. It's, it's a big company, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, that was my first foray into marketing. And obviously, IBM is not a startup company by any <laughs> oh, means. God, no. um, and uh, after I spent a couple of years there, I came back here to the States. I went and got my MBA. And uh, during my MBA program, uh, I took classes in the entre- entrepreneurship uh, center. And I uh, eventually started getting some more interest in startups and the VC world. And after I finished that, uh, that program, I moved up to Silicon Valley and I started to work for uh, a number of different uh, B2B software as a service startups. And so I think that's when I first start uh, getting a little bit more exposure and overtime mm-hmm. interest in startups. Very different world than large corporations like an IBM, like Yahoo, where I spent a little bit of time. At. Yeah. I did a, a little bit of consulting for, uh, for Microsoft. Uh, and during and my, another my place that everyone years. has had their hand in on the West yeah, Coast, right? they've done something for Microsoft at some point. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I, I just I guess startups just really drew my attention or my interest, mostly because things moved fast and uh, a lot of the um, the activities or work that I do 
from a tactical level as well as strategic level, you could see it. You could see the effects of it mm-hmm. as opposed to being one small, very small cog in a giant machine or yeah. a giant wheel that is a large corporation. Not to say that there's anything wrong with working in large yeah. companies, but for me personally, I, I just felt more drawn or more interest in startups as a whole. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's faster. It's more nimble. They're scrappy. I feel like a lot of times it's also there's more risk involved so that you feel like there's a fire under your backside to kind of do your best work versus like this job's going to be here kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true, especially when I was elbows deep into startups as an operator, as a marketer. Things move very fast. Time moves very fast. Uh-huh. Every quarter, every month, or even every week, uh, there's something that needs to be accomplished, right? And compare that to working for a larger company, they're further along. And so they're thinking about longer term, longer, longer term in terms of years, perhaps even decades, right? For startups, you don't have that luxury. You got to think, okay, how am I going to grow the business so that we don't shut down by next quarter? Uh, and I've been in situations like that. And uh, yes, it is risky to uh, your earlier comment, but part of that is, uh, you know, part of that is the fun part of yeah. working for startups. Yeah. So you've done, you, so you've worked for startups, you've had your own startups, like RevOptica. What is RevOptica? Yeah. So RevOptica started off mostly from pain points, challenges, and frustrations that I've experienced as a B2B marketer for the past Some of the best things happen that years. way, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, as a high level, it's a B2B buyer journey, visualization and analytics platform. We're Ooh. very early on, uh, which means, you know, working on the, the initial product prototype or mm-hmm. using startup terms, MVP, you know, minimal viable product. So we're developing that right now. Uh, but oh, so essentially it's right now you're in the thicket. I am in the weeds earlier. You mentioned when you gave the nice intro for myself, uh, My full-time job, the job that pays the bills, if you will, is that of a growth advisor for Mocker Capital, early stage VC firm. You know, I'm a full-time employee there, great people, fantastic track record. It's helpful to have a good, have a steady job while you work on your side hustle. Yeah, exactly. It's a, yeah, it's side hustle. I think when you're the CEO of a startup, it's like a, it's a dual hustle almost. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That, that's a great term. I actually never heard that before. You can use that. I will let you take that. And you can use dual hustle. Yeah. I literally just do a hustle that second. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, RevOptica is something that's been in, on my mind for the past eight years or so, mostly mm-hmm. because I've had challenges that I've experienced as a B2B marketer for these startups. Yeah. And there are difficulties that, and challenges that I couldn't find a, a good solution to. I mean, there are solutions out in the market. Um, that kind of addressed uh, the pain points that I had, um, but didn't really do it well or to the degree that I felt like I need to have my pain point addressed. And so, you know, like a lot of how a lot of startups come to be is someone realizes there's a problem, especially if it's a problem that they themselves are experiencing. Absolutely. And I yeah. figure, look, you know, there's no product that does exactly what I want to do to solve for my needs. Let's, let's see how I could go and build it. So. Yeah. Again, we're at the very crazy. beginning stages. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Hey there, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. Real quick, I want to make sure you know that the world's leading B2B marketing expo is returning to the Los Angeles Convention Center on March 21st and 22nd. It's high time we got back together to learn, see the latest technologies and solutions, and network, right? Join thousands of marketing professionals just like you to learn from over 250 industry expert speakers, educational masterclasses, and over 300 exhibitors. And this year, your ticket also gets you into the Sales Innovation Expo and the Marketing and Advertising Expo. So it's like three conferences in one. It's March 21st and 22nd at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Go to b2bmarketingexpo.us to register. That's b2bmarketingexpo.us. The Marketing Podcast Network is a proud partner of the B2B Marketing Expo for 2023. We'll see you in LA. But that's fun though. It's kind of like when you, when it's not like you're joining a company that has, like I'm doing some stuff with Founders Institute right now. And I'm working with the founders right now and saying, is this done already? Can you do it better? Is it yeah. worth you doing it better? Or is it worth you saying, hey, can I have a job at your company kind of thing? 
It's right. when you find something that has never been, or you, you've tried your darndest to find it because it's easier to just buy the product than yeah. build it yourself. I mean, like, I'm sure you would say, like, if, if you could find Revoptica done, you just buy it and go about your merry way. Yeah. But it's not done. So guess what? You've got to build it. Yeah, exactly. And, th and there are products in the market that does portions of what I would envision Revoptica would be once we launch a fully fledged product and build along the way. Uh, but what I found in the market either is too complicated, too complex, mostly because they're trying to, to sell to enterprises, complex organizations mm -hmm. that have very complex needs and yes. therefore might require customization or bespoke type of solutions. Uh, and for me, most of my career has been in smaller companies, smaller yeah. startups where we didn't have a million dollar, multi-million dollar budget for technology or solutions for me to do my job. Yeah. And the ones that were within price, my price range as a startup marketer, they weren't that great. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's obviously opportunities to spot gaps in the market that we yes. can focus on and track. And that's a lot of times what I also advise startups on, um, you know, in my, my day job, if you will, and as yeah. a consultant or advisor, you know, how do you find areas of opportunities where, yeah, you might think uh, there is a 800 pound gorilla in Google or Amazon or whatever company. Well, you know, they can't solve every need in every market niche. There are ways to win. So you kind of have the inside track it, to learn as you go and exactly. as you advise. It's a good gig. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so enjoy it so far. Exactly. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Well, you know, I think something that I've learned within startup, which kind of goes in against my nature, and you and I were kind of talking about this uh, before we started the show, yeah. which is you, things don't have to be perfect all the yeah. time. Uh, and it's for so me, yeah. it is. It's very hard. My very nature is do things well, do it as close to 100%. In startups, you just, especially at the very early stage, you just don't have that luxury just of get being able to get there, it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so for me personally, that's one of the challenges uh, where, you know, I got to change my way of thinking and say, okay, in order just mm -hmm. to get something out there or get things done fast, I have to do it in a crafty manner. I think that a lot of times what I found when I used to be in house and work for CEOs or, you know, early in my career CMOs that say, hey, Tony, just crank out a bunch of blog posts or create this email sequence or, um, you know, set up uh, our, you know, ads on Facebook or, or yeah. Google. And they just want things fast without uh, the need for some sort of quality or to, mm -hmm. or to do it well. I think a lot of companies tend to, especially early stage, you know, they, they're trained with the mantra of, you know, just get it done, 80% yeah, there. Yeah. They rush, but it's not even 80% there a lot of times. You can't game. get to 80 if you rush. It just yeah. can't. You can do stuff yeah. good, you know, and, and well and all that stuff, but you got to slow down a little bit and, and focus on it. It doesn't have to be hundred percent with all the, you know, like my own newsletter exactly. I put out, there's grammatical errors all the time, I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. but I feel like it's good to get it out, but I'm not rushing to get it out. Like I, you set yeah. my cadence kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's a challenge, right? Like where is that fine line between mm -hmm. speed? and quality where you don't want to sacrifice quality yeah. at the sake of speed when you're putting out a bunch of crappy work, but at the same time, you can't wait until everything is done perfectly in you order to business. launch or, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So for me, that that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I'm still learning how to do better. Um, as yeah, well. for sure. That's great. So what is the scariest and the best thing about being an entrepreneur? I'm gonna, I, there's really two questions, but I'm going to merge them to yeah. one. They tend to go off each other. Well, you know, I think sometimes I just feel like I struggle with imposter syndrome. If that makes sense. Oh, I get it all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, you, you know, you mentioned earlier, six, I have 16 years in B2B experience. I, 14 of those years or so, I've been in startups. And so yeah. I feel comfortable working in a startup, but most of that time has been working for someone else where yeah. someone else's company and starting my own company. And uh, by the way, I spent a period of that time doing my own consulting. It, it yeah. is an entrepreneur's type of gig. 
Um, and even so, even during that time, even though my product was consulting, my services, my hours, it's very similar to building a product based Absolutely. Type of startup. Yeah, I live there every day. Yeah. Right. And the challenge in the, going back to this imposter syndrome is, am I good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? Because mm -hmm. I've never been a founder of a tech startup before. I've never been a CEO before. I worked for CEOs mm -hmm. and partnered with them very closely, but you know, do I turn. know? Yeah, exactly. And so sometimes I get this imposter syndrome type of feeling like the, the best way that I've uh, found how to overcome it or you know, to address that, just simply talk to other startup founders. Uh, everyone has it, even the big wigs. Yep. I mean, I'm sure Steve Be Benios or, you know, Bezos yeah, or, you know, they, they all yeah. have it. I mean, am I as good? Am, am I as good as Bill Gates? No, you're not. But like, you don't have <laughs> yeah. to be as good as Bill Gates. You're the head of Salesforce for crying out loud. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that kind of stuff. Like, and a lot of these guys, these people that have been, you know, the, what's her name? The CEO of Spanx. You know, mm -hmm. she started out of her spare bedroom. Like, yeah. you think about that, like, Bill Gates started out of his garage. Steve Jobs started out of his garage. Or, the, or yeah. some version of their house, you know? Yeah. You all, and the thing, I have to remember, even Warren Buffett puts the, his pants on the same way that we do. <laughs> yes. And he's a good example, because he's, right. like, the most humble, freaking, billionaire you know, you ever yeah. meet, but he's so humble. He's still yeah. dry. I think he still lives in the house he's always lived in. Some weird oh, thing really? like that. Like it's like you have all the money. He's like, I don't need a big house. Yeah. yeah. He, he drive. I think he drives like, a decent car. It's like that's the reason why he has so much money because he doesn't <laughs> spend it. Yeah. Anyway, so just talking to other co-founders, other entrepreneurs has that's helped key. me a lot. Yeah. It's very key. And and also keeping the eye on the ball. Little things. Um, there's a million things to do when you start your own company. Can't do them all. Um, but it, for me, it helps to prioritize and understand, okay, this is the, the near-term milestone I need to hit, or yeah. I need to work towards this um, and, and just take one step at a time. And that's, that helps me a lot because if I tend, you know, if I start feeling, you know, do I know how to run a company run posters, you know, have that imposter syndrome type of feeling? Well, if I just kind of break, break it down into chunks, right? Yeah. And, I, and I know, okay, by the end of this month or to buy the end of uh, this quarter. Yeah. Let's try to do this with my co-founder. Let's, let's complete this or what's in my, uh, in my core. Uh, a lot of times what I've been focusing on is around customer discovery, just talking to people in the market, understand what is the need? Mm -hmm. Is there a pain point? How big of a pain point is there? Uh, how do you currently address it? You know? Um, yeah. And so spending time to do that um, keeps my mind on, the, the near-term goals and taking one step at a time. And, and that helps me quite a bit. And it's just, you know, making progress, right? Like keeps it centered. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Tony, where can people find you online? I mean, seriously, when you look at your, I mean, obviously LinkedIn probably. Yeah. LinkedIn, Tony Yang is a pretty common name. Um, we'll have, we'll have but, the link uh, in the show notes. So people yeah. can click on that and find you, but yeah. But, but I, I use the, uh, I guess you could say sort of like an on, online, I don't know what you call it, uh, uh, Tones810 is, is the, the profile name that I use for LinkedIn, for Twitter. Um, I'm more active on LinkedIn these days than on Twitter, but I, you know, well, Twitter's Twitter kind of scary right now. Twitter's <laughs> a scary place right now. So yeah. yeah. And then certainly if you, if anyone wants to learn more about startup, uh, especially the, uh, the blog section of my uh, startup's website, which is revoptica.com. Yeah. Um, I, I'm starting to write more about things that, uh, I, I've learned and also have helped other marketers, mm -hmm. revenue operations, people go to market leaders like CROs yeah. who I've worked very closely with in the past. Um, and just to write about things that I've done to address certain things, such as just getting the thoughts out there. It's not pitching product. It's about, you know, um, what are the problem areas that yeah. all of us in let's say B2B go to market type of roles. That we struggle with what are the challenges and how have i addressed those in the past yeah. so i talk about things like revenue operations um buyer journey frameworks messaging frameworks Ooh, um I, I, I have to go dig in over there yeah that's revoptip.com appreciate anybody who goes there to read it leave me comments or, or let me oh, know you're, how... you're brave you have the comments open wow <laughs> i haven't turned it on yet but i will soon so well you're brave 
Okay, now most blogs used to have the comments open. Now they don't. I don't have the blogs yeah. open. I figure I figured if they want to talk to me, but I'm everywhere. So it's, you know, yeah, they can find me. Yeah, someplace. they can reach me. Yeah, exactly. So. so Tony, this has been so much fun. I've learned so much. Thank you so much for making the time to be on the show. And we'll see everyone next week. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast directory of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business too? Caroline Kay hosts a great podcast called Snippets of Genius. Caroline, tell us what these folks will get out of listening. Snippets of Genius is a lighthearted business podcast with some brilliant insights into how you can attract and cultivate success. In each episode, I have an inspiring conversation with genius guests from the worlds of business development, marketing, design, and wellness. Each of them share their ballsy, daring moves to burst business opportunities wide open. Every episode is designed to give you as much value as possible so you can decide, define, and develop anything you want in your career or business. Hard to turn that down. Where can people subscribe? They can come on over to my website, which is www.carolineK.co forward slash podcast or find the show at marketingpodcast.net or search for Snippets of Genius wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.